Throughout drug discovery, failure due to toxicity, of the liver in particular, represents a significant and costly hindrance to bringing new therapeutics to market. Also, with increasingly poor diets, metabolic disorders, and other liver pathologies are on the rise. Therefore, there is a need in the drug discovery and development space for better models to predict liver toxicity and model these complex liver diseases. Hi, I'm Dr. Erin Edwards, Director of In Vitro Services at Visicol, and this presentation will be an overview of some background on liver physiology as it relates to the development of these models. The human liver is a beautifully complex yet highly ordered organ comprised of many functional units known as liver lobules, which are capable of filtering blood and producing and transporting bile. While some oxygen-rich blood enters the liver lobule through a branch of the hepatic artery in order to nourish the liver, the majority of blood that is to be filtered enters the liver lobule through a branch of the hepatic portal vein. These two entryways converge into what is known as the liver sinusoids that in turn converge and empty into the central vein, many of which coalesce at the whole liver level into the hepatic vein. Bile ducts arise throughout the liver lobule, facilitating the transport of bile acids produced by hepatocytes. Now as blood travels through this architecture, many of the body's needs are fulfilled, from blood filtration, to production of plasma proteins, to glycogen storage, and breakdown and clearance of drugs or other toxic substances. Now of course, the cells that make up this architecture are crucial to its function. The hepatocytes are the most numerous of cell types, comprising about 70 to 85 percent of the liver mass. And their polarization sort of sets up the lobule structure. Their basolateral sides form the structural basis for the liver sinusoids, while the apical sides form the bile ducts. These are the cells that actually produce bile from cholesterol and fatty acids. The hepatocytes also perform many drug metabolizing functionalities and are capable of storing glycogen and lipids. The most common indicator of hepatocytes is albumin, allowing them to be easily identified immunohistologically. On the basolateral side of the hepatocytes, there exists a small space, known as the space of dis, where supporting cells relevant to many liver diseases exist. But the nearest cell layer on that basolateral side is one made up of liver sinusoidal endothelial cells. These form the highly fenestrated vessel through which flows any blood that is to be filtered. This, combined with their endocytotic nature, aids in that filtration function. These endothelial cells can be identified with a number of common markers, such as CD31, or with some more specific ones, like SE1 or VAP1. Another key to the filtering functionality of the liver is the presence of Kupfer cells. In addition to functioning in a classic immunological sense by patrolling the liver sinusoid and initiating inflammatory responses when necessary, these macrophage-like cells can help clear spent red blood cells and other debris. These Kupfer cells can be labeled with common macrophage markers like CD68, CD11B, or ED2. The final key cell subtype relevant to many disease pathologies are the hepatic stellate cells. These cells can store vitamin A, but most importantly, when activated, particularly in the context of liver fibrosis, these stellate cells produce extracellular matrix and incite further cytokine release, leading to an altogether aggravated state of the liver that ultimately leads to comp compromised functionality. Now, as mentioned earlier, these various cell subtypes help set up the structural and functional organization of the liver lobule. Most notably, those hepatocytes form bile canaliculi for the transport of bile acids. These channel-like structures can be labeled in a number of ways, including with fluorescent bile acids. Several drug transporters, here shown as an example is MDR1, can also help identify that apical hepatocyte surface that forms the bile canaliculi. But many other functionalities of the liver can be immunohistologically evaluated as well. For example, the expression of cytochrome P450 enzymes, those crucial ex executors of drug metabolism, can be assessed before and after stimulation. 
But altogether, as we start to consider this structure and the need for models that can accurately assess liver toxicity and diseases, we need to think of the best models that mimic both structure and function. Given their low cost, high throughput, and the relatively low ethical concerns surrounding their implementation, cell culture models have increasingly been implemented in drug discovery. Especially since many animal models actually express different hepatobiliary transporters, the use of human cell-based models has become a huge focus. However, even with cell culture, there's a lot of variability. For example, 2D cell cultures often lack expression of known important transporters, like MRP2, while 3D cell cultures exhibit plentiful expression. As a result of this increased in vivo relevancy of 3D human cell-based models, pharma companies are increasingly looking to spheroid models for toxicity and drug pathology studies. Most commonly, pharmaceutical companies are evaluating these models for their ability to study drug-induced liver injury, or DILI. Interestingly, DILI can occur via a number of mechanisms. In cholestatic pathways, a drug may affect the ability of hepatocytes to excrete bile acids. The increasing accumulation of bile acids leads to reactive oxygen species production, mitochondrial dysfun dysfunction, and ultimately cell death. In non-cholestatic mechanisms, drugs or metabolites may be directly cytotoxic by binding proteins, disrupting membrane integrity, or by altering calcium homeostasis. Idiosyncratic mechanisms are particularly perplexing since, by name, these types of injuries only occur in a small subset of patients. It's thought that these mechanisms may be due to metabolizing enzyme variability in the patient population or possibly immune-mediated mechanisms. As a result, pharmaceutical companies are looking for in vitro models that can evaluate drugs for their ability to incite liver injury through any of these mechanisms. Many drug development companies are looking to solve other liver pathologies. One very common one, due to increasingly poor diets in developed countries, is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. This disease often pre presents as a continuum, beginning with excessive lipid accumulation, known as steatosis, that can result from drug-induced injury or de novo lipogenesis from high sugar diets. When accompanied by an inflammatory insult, this can result in fibrosis of the liver, which ultimately interferes with the ability of the liver to perform its normal functions of filtering blood and producing bile for digestion. Interestingly, there are a number of ways to assess disease state at each of these stages, and pharmaceutical companies are increasingly interested in using these measures as endpoints to study therapeutic efficacy in treating non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and other liver pathologies. Due to the explosion of interest in 3D cell culture models to study liver toxicity and disease, Visicol is excited to launch a platform of open source 3D cell culture models called Visicol Open Liver. These models, which range in complexity to fit the specific cost, throughput, and validation requirements of different research questions, are currently being used in in-house studies and will soon be commercially available for external use. All open source protocols, material sourcing guidelines, and culture recommendations will also be made freely available as part of Visicol's effort to generate consensus around appropriate model choice for exploring toxicity and liver disease. For more information, visit us at visicol.com.